And so there's a transaction for that. Now, how can we do that? Well, we know the cash account's gonna go down. The other side's gonna go into some kind of asset account for investments. When I look at the forms up top and say, well, which form should I use? There is no form designed specifically for this transaction because this, once again, like many of these beginning transactions, is not something we expect to happen on a day-to-day -day basis in the future. However, so then the next question, is cash affected? Yeah, cash is affected because it's coming out of the checking account. So we could use an expense form or a check form to decrease the, the to, to record the decrease in the checking account. So if I go into an expense form, for example, then we have our categories and I can then apply it to a category down below for our, our category. So, however, uh, oftentimes I think it's easier to enter it into a register. So notice, of course, if you were using bank feeds and you had something coming out of the check feed, the checking account, and you were recording your books with bank feeds, as we'll do in another course or section, then it would still record in essence, an expense form. If we're entering our information manually, then sometimes the easier way to enter it, if it's a checking account thing, is to use the register. So let's try that. I'm gonna use the register. I'm gonna open up the hamburger on the left, scroll down a bit, holding control, scroll down. I'm gonna go into the register, which is under the accounting view in uh, the accounting view. It's under accounting and then the chart of accounts. In the business view, by the way, the register is located under the bookkeeping and then the chart of accounts. So there it is in the business view, scrolling back on over. So we're gonna choose the register. Let's close the hand boogie. So now we've got the register. Note that it's not just for the checking account, but all balance sheet accounts. You have this kind of register functionality. If I go into the register, we can record our transactions directly in here in a little bit faster format. So we've got down here, add deposit. If I hit the little triangle, these are all the forms that can be used for transactions that are gonna be hitting the checking account. So we're gonna use an expense form, which is similar to a check form with no check number. It means in QuickBooks that it's a form that's gonna decrease the checking account. So I'm gonna say this happened on 010423. And then the payee, let's make a new one. I'm gonna make them as we go here. So if I hit the drop down, we don't have one for, I'm gonna say it's Vanguard. So you could just type it in here. A lot of times I type in whatever the new vendor is and then hit tab and it'll then ask you to add it. So we have vendor or customer. It's not really either because it's an investment company, but of the two, I think the vendor would be more appropriate. So that's the one I'll pick. And then I'm gonna say this is an investment in the memo. It's gonna be a payment. I'm gonna say 12,000 going out of the checking account into the Vanguard. Note that you, you we'll, we'll keep it there. And then if I select the dropdown, we don't have anything here yet for an investment account in Vanguard. So we're gonna go through our, our normal process. We were given the chart of accounts by uh, QuickBooks when we set it up. So if there's an account that is applicable, I will, I will use it. If I don't like the name, I'll change the name. I don't believe there's any account that, that is gonna be applicable for the investment account that I want. So I'm just gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna add a new account. I could add it up top by adding a new account, but I'm just gonna type it in here. And that helps me to kind of double check that the name isn't there. I'm gonna say short term investment, short term investment. And then I'm gonna say tab. And once again, we get the drop down window that's gonna help us to add the account. So here's the account type. It's not gonna be a bank account. It's gonna be an other current asset account. And then this one, the detail, the detail type I will put in here is not as important. So I'm just gonna say like other current asset. So I'll just use the generic other current asset, short-term investment, that's the key thing we want. Description, we're going to, I don't really need one. I'm not gonna make it a sub account of anything. Now note, as we're here with these sub accounts, I just realized that if you have multiple investments, then you might use the sub accounts to kind of group the investments together. We'll talk about that a little bit more when we see what happens on the income statement. So I'm gonna save it and close it. And so that looks good. It looks like it should do what we want it to do. So let's go ahead and save it. Boom. And then 
I've been doing this on the balance sheet tab for some reason. So I'm going to open the balance sheet back up because I messed that up. So I'm going to go reports, balance sheet, change in the range in up top from 010123 to 123123. Run it to refresh it, close up the hand boogie. And then in the checking account, we should have a decrease. So if I go into the cash account here and I say, okay, we now have a decrease. There it is. It created an expense form, even though we use the register. The other side in the split account is going to the short-term investment. If I go into this form, we open up not the register, but an expense form. The expense form being the form used to decrease the checking account. The, the, there's also a check form, which is basically the same thing, but it has a check number in it. So let's close this out. And that looks good. I'm gonna go back. And then we could go to the short-term investments. Here it is, 12,000 in short-term investments. So we have that as well, looks good. No impact on the income statement again, 